Welcome back to Sports Beat. Today is May 18th, and this is episode 14. And we are in the lovely My Little Falls podcast studio. As always, I'm joined by the man who can make me sound better but can't fix my face, Dave Warner. <laughs> Too much work. Too much work. <laughs> yeah. The video but- editing is not like taking a still image with Photoshop. It's a whole <laughs> lot, whole lot different, a lot more effort. And we just let it run. We and we don't have the budget for CGI yet. Yeah. yeah. We both have bases made for radio. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> And, and we're and we're recording this, which is funny because you know usually when you think of podcasts, you think of digital, but this is available on on yep. YouTube as well. So yep. I have to look pretty and oh well, yeah. Oh, well, actually, I'm a nice shirt on today. I didn't uh, realize. I, it, I, so, did, yeah. I had a meeting. I figured okay, and I yeah. ended up just flying here from work. So All right. We have another just press box segment for you, and then uh, hopefully in the next coming weeks we'll have a couple guests to talk about some stuff going on, and then we're working on a special guest for two weeks, uh, the week after uh, Memorial Day, and we'll uh, we'll release that when we can. Yeah. But for right now, we'll jump right into our press box segment. So we're starting off with high school softball. CBA beat Little Falls nine to two. Little Falls scored in the first inning to be up by two all, but then uh, it was all CBA from there. Um, so that was that game right there. And then we jump over to Holland Patton, who remains unbeaten after beating West Canada 7-0. to zero. They are now 3-0 and on the season. Herkimer was in action in a doubleheader versus Canastota. The first game, Canastota edged out the Magicians 4-3. to three, And in the second game, it was all Stota with a final score of 12-3. to three. Canastota improves to 3-0 and on the season. Camden beat CVA in a close one, 11-10. And Cooperstown blanked Sequoia Valley 5-0. And last for softball, we have Whitesboro beat RFA in a low-scoring affair, 2-0. to zero. So that is what we have for the uh, softball. Thank you for a couple of the people that did submit um, scores, one of them over Facebook. Um, so please, again, uh, and we'll mention it at the end of the show, but please make sure you're sending in your scores because that helps us to make sure we add them uh, into our press box segment here. <laughs> Jumping over to high school baseball, Herkimer played Frankfurt yesterday. After Herkimer jumped out to a 2-0 lead, the Maroon Knights stormed back with four unanswered runs in the fourth inning. Herkimer came back to tie at five before Frankfurt's Skyler was able to drive a home run in the eighth inning for the win. Final score there was 6-5 to five Frankfurt Skyler. Uh, Camden beat CVA 10-4. Sherburne Earlville beat Mount Markham 8-5. Cooperstown beat Sequoia Valley six to three. Clinton handled Canastota fifteen to one. That had to be bad. And when you see, you gotta gotta be able to play. <laughs> Clinton also had a game earlier last week. It looks like, and they edged out Sequoia after seven in- innings of action. Final score there was fifteen to fourteen. Now that's a that's a that's a better. That's game. a good game. That's a good game. Morrisville Eaton uh, beat Poland nine to one, and Whitesboro beat New Hartford nine to one as well. And last, and for baseball, we have Cooperstown beat Frankfurt 14-1. to one. That one has to hurt. I will say uh, uh, I have family out in Whitesboro, and it's it's always fun to see. And it doesn't exist so much over here anymore, but like I think back in the day, even when I was in school, Herkimer versus Ilian, no matter what it was, it's always going to be, you know, the match. And, and I know all the bigger schools over in uh, Oneida County, that's still the game. So I, I can only imagine. And, but I wonder what the big rivalries are like without the fans. Oh yeah. Probably a lot more boring, but now, Hey, that's been yeah. removed up to 500 now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, masks dropping at some point. I know, you know, working at the County we're going to see what the guidance looks like, but the general order, I know, I think I saw something on uh, Facebook earlier on lunch today that Stewart's uh, one of the shops had said that they're uh, tomorrow, no longer mask as long as you're vaccinated. So it's going to be interesting to see how fast these dominoes start falling and where people get put in and, Well, this, I mean, the thing with that is, so is it honor system or, well, I saw one business put up on Facebook that they were going to check. It was a hair salon. And I'm like, seriously, you're going to stand there at the door. And this is, we were talking about this, uh, you know, just in general, but it's going to get muddy real quick because if you do nothing and somebody gets it now, are you responsible as the owner if they want to come back? Because, you know, I can sue you because you're wearing a blue shirt today and you can sue me because I'm not wearing red. Nice. It does. It just, it's going to get muddy really quickly. No, I, I'm, I'm glad I don't own a business. Well, they're not, <clears throat> nobody will do it. Nobody will put the protection in that's needed for them because the lawyers are going to make too much money off of it. So. Oh yeah. And getting a clear answer from any government entity at the state level at this point the, and, or the federal level, the left hand doesn't even know if the right hand exists. Yeah. Well, and the thing is 
there's nobody who can prove where they got COVID. I mean, right. where did I pick it up? You can do all the contact tracing you want, but where exactly was there's, I at that moment right. when I caught, I mean. And, the, and they're talking about it, it. How long does it take for you to get it versus have being symptomatic and everything so they can track it back, but is it provable? No. Almost over. Almost over. That till, yeah. till whatever's next. Mm-hmm. Uh, continuing with high school sports, we got a couple golf scores for you. Waterville boys faced off against Mount Markham. Uh, Waterville won 168 to 195 in West Kansas. Sorry, West Canada and Remsen tied at 212 all in their recent matchup. I mean, that's that's strange. That's with a, that's a lot of golf. That's a lot of that's <laughs> to a, be that, even. To be even. <laughs> like like and, and there's no like in there's extra innings in baseball. There's extra innings overtime for football. There's no. Extras for how about a closest to the pin? There you go, right? Tiebreaker, right? Something go to yeah. a 19th hole, put put your best on well, best. Okay, that I know you can I, 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 clean the keg yeah. out faster. That all right, this is high school. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> jumping over to girls, Camden beat CBA in a, in a closer score, uh, 256 to two, 256 to 276. So that was a little bit of a and I, I, I just golf isn't my thing, man. I can't do golf, I can't watch it. I don't. I, 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 it makes me want to fall asleep. How, how that like camera, it. how that camera follows that ball with no, nothing in it. I don't know. Radar. Is it really? <laughs> no, I don't know how, and it's like on it and you're watching it. And I'm just like, huh? I will tell you, it's actually probably pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, they've got to be really skilled because I was trying to pick out a helicopter one time with one of the cameras we use here in the camera. I had it out there yeah. and I could hear the guy and I couldn't find him in the viewfinder. And when you look at the beginning of it all, I'm all over the sky looking for this guy. <laughs> And it's a helicopter, not a golf ball. They had a NASCAR over the week and, and jumping a professional quick, but they were, uh, before the uh, race took off at Dover, they were showing all the camera people that are po- positioned around the track and everything. And they must have had like 15, 20. Wow. And, and I'm thinking, well, you know, that's how they probably do it. And finishing off with high school, uh, we have boys tennis and Holland Patton beat Poland five to zero. VVS beat CVA four to one. Poland beat Little Falls four to one. Cooperstown beat Holland Patton three to two and Clinton beat Mount Markham four to one. And so that is what we have for the high school segment. And we'll do college before we take a quick commercial break. Um, It's really, really nice to see that all of our local colleges are doing excellent. They really Um, are. It it just, I I was doing some of the prep for the uh, show um, and, and Herkimer and Utica college, everybody kind of poo poos, you know, cause they're in the Valley they're in, and it's grade 13. And, you know, some of the stuff that they were reporting and reading over the scores from everything that happened over the weekend, just friggin' awesome. Yeah. And cool. So as we reported last week, the men's golf was down in Ogle Ogles tree resort in West Virginia for the NCAA division three championship. They played on the Jones and Palmer golf course. They tied for 38th place in the country. Um, in the tournament. So congratulations to them on a great season. I'm sure that's a fun trip to be had. Looked like they had gorgeous weather. I, somebody posted a picture on a, I think it was on Utica College of Athletics. They posted a picture of the green at like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm just like, I want to be there. Let's go. Any place that has the word resort tacked onto it. I'm there. Right. Is good. Down. Baseball went best of three in the Empire eight with Houghton College. They lost their first game on Friday, seven to eight. And then they won their second game 18 to five on uh, Friday to force a game three on Saturday. They edged out Houghton to take the win eight to seven. They will now play for the first time in the championship this coming Friday at noon. So good luck to them as they continue their season and uh, we'll report on you next week. So good luck. Jumping up to the college, uh, Herkimer College. After losing the final uh, four opener on Friday, the Herkimer Generals had to win four games over the weekend to win the championship in a double elimination format, and they came up a couple innings short. After winning two games on Saturday, the Generals forced a winner take all game seven for the Region 3 Final Four against Niagara County Community College by winning game six on Sunday of the score of 19-8. to But the Thunder Wolves battled back from a deficit of 4-0, and 9-5 in the final game and scored a run in the bottom of the ninth to take the Region 3 title by a score of 11-10. to Herkimer's Yuzuki Amura from Japan and Matt Tobin from Newport earned tournament honors as runner-ups for the Generals. The Generals now sit at 32-4 and overall with a sixth-place ranking in the latest 
NJCAA Division Three National Poll. They will have to wait until Monday, May 24th, to see if they have secured one of the two at-large bids for the NJCAA Division Three World Series in Greenville, Tennessee. And that will take place on May 29th to the 3rd. So baseball uh, still had a great season, and we'll see if they can make it into the into the more postseason action. Yeah, I heard it's going to be tough for them to get one yeah. of those art at large spots. Yeah, so, I yeah. looked at it too. I mean, they might be the first person out on the bubble. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, hopefully they get in. It's great to oh, see them go. Be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then over on softball, softball wasted no time last <laughs> week on Friday. The generals secured an easy win against Jefferson County community college in the region three B championship. And that also secured the 400th win for head coach PJ and audio. A few hours later, they locked down win number two with a score of 11 to three. The generals, now with a record of 22 and four and hold a number four ranking in the latest NJCAA division three national poll will await their seed and first round opponent for their national tournament. That matchup will take place Thursday, May 27th in Syracuse. So good luck to uh, uh, PJ and his girls as they move forward and Raz and his team of uh, guys up there. Hopefully they can get into the postseason action as well. Finishing up with college here, um, Syracuse lacrosse. Now, for the men, we can start playing that funeral music. Oy vey. <laughs> Cuse got handed one of the worst losses in program history with an 18-8 to de- uh, defeat at the hands of Georgetown. Season over. A lot of questions need to be answered on what to do with next season and what that's going to look like. This season had a few high points, but a lot of negative trends show up, and that really needs to be dealt with. Not a hardcore lacrosse fan, but, you know, watched it all my life my my dad and a couple of my family and extended friends are my family if you will are big lacrosse and they they you know they they battled back but they just they, they look like absolute shit playing georgetown there's mm. no other way to say it they never even they they it, they should have just forfeited the match and i know you don't do that but they got handed <laughs> one of the worst losses in tournament history in their as they just look they like they got eight come on i mean you know they were in there you don't give up when you scoring something yeah you're not scoring anything that's that's true that's yeah. a good point maybe right. i'm just being too negative yeah you're bringing me, you're bringing me back to center why <sighs> do you do that Jeez, i wanted to have the hot know. take you know women's lacrosse had a great showing in their nc double eight uh tournament over the weekend they beat loyola 20 to 8 in the second round the orange are seeded number three syracuse will play number six seed florida in the quarterfinals round which will uh, be next week at the syracuse university soccer stadium Specific dates, times, locations have yet to be announced, but the Orange will play on either Saturday, May 22nd, or Sunday, May 23rd. So good luck to them as they continue on. Men, take notice. That's how you win. No, too much. Too much. Uh, too hot. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah. Well, and uh, they're gonna pl- they're gonna make that an animated GIF. They're gonna do a little GIFy of you. Men, good. Men, good. <laughs> I, I hope if that can get me uh, internet famous, and that's what I'm known for, yeah. I'll take it at this point. Yeah. And uh, I may even do it. <laughs> oh, great. My producer's <laughs> selling me out. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm done. No, yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. So, we're going to take a quick commercial break here, and we will be right back uh, for our professional uh, wrap up. And that's it. Visit My Little Falls and stay connected with the latest news information and events in the city. Our mission is to generate interest in the community and connect residents in a more meaningful way by facilitating deeper conversations about how these stories will shape the future of Little Falls, New York. Join thousands of weekly visitors who stay up to date with feature stories, interviews, videos, and our events calendar. It's about timely local news for the community keeping citizens informed about important issues, telling stories about the people who live and work here, and giving locally owned businesses the opportunity to reach a very targeted audience of local residents and tourists alike. It's a whole new form of media-rich content developed specifically for today's mobile lifestyle and listeners. You can download our iOS app in the iTunes store or sign up for our weekly newsletter. Stop by today at mylittlefalls.com. You'll be glad you did. And we're back. So starting our professional segment off with some Diamond Dogs news. Believe season tickets are gone. So if you did not listen to us on Thursday and go and get your season tickets, you're going to have to hope you can get tickets to go to each individual game because their season tickets are gone, which is great to see. No, that's 
Perfect. I love that place. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, not really all that surprising. Again, we're seeing restrictions, you know, go and and, and slow Moving down a little up. bit. And it's probably going to make Travis feel a little bit better. Yeah, I know he a little uneasy the last time we had spoken. I know yep. between the last time we spoke and now is a you know light years away of yep. regulations, but got to be nice for him knowing that all this planning and prep and, and work that they've done for the last couple of years is really going to come to fruition now. Yep. So cool. And uh, we are hoping to get Travis on ahead of their June third opener. Um, to just talk and give us a, a preview of what's to look like and just some of the fun stuff going on. So stick around to uh, have Travis on here, hopefully next week, if we can arrange that. Uh, and also please keep in mind, anybody interested in singing the national anthem for the team, please contact Travis at the Diamond Dogs. However, don't post that on Facebook because that's what gets you put in Facebook jail, apparently. <laughs> I know that's probably not 100% true, but that's the story I'm sticking with at this point. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Cause apparently we were selling something cause I don't, who knows it's Facebook and the rules. And if you, anybody can figure out the rules of Facebook or social media to begin with, please give me a call and explain it to me. Cause I'm a well-researched guy on some things and I can't figure it the hell out over an Indy car. They were back in action after a week off with the GMR grand Prix Renus VK took the checkered flag after leading 33 laps. And the most important one, the final lap Indy car takes a break and will be back in action in two weeks on May 30th for the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500. And I'm pretty pumped about that. I know Ray Biggs has been counting down. That's a cool race. And man, and I believe it, it's the, the Penske family bought the the track. They bought the Indianapolis Speedway. Really? And they were going to do uh, all the stuff last year. And there was a big thing on ESPN talking about it. And they had to cancel. And they were really upset. He's dumped a ton of money into it, the getting the racetrack, preserving a lot of the stuff, especially the infield. Got the track all redone, got the grandstands redone, new roof on a bunch of things. They have that communication tower that's over right. there. That was all redone from the inside out. Wow, nice. And, and he, you know, he's a race yeah. legend. Yeah. Um, and he wanted to preserve that because he was worried about where that was gonna go. So it's uh it's pretty cool to see that. I'm I'm really if if I had the ability to, I would probably go. I would go. You'd I really go. would, yeah. yeah. And over on NASCAR, they were uh, back in action in Dover. Alex Bowman took the checkered uh, flag there. Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott rounded out the top three. NASCAR is next in Texas at the Circus Circuit of America. I'm sure it'll be a circus um, this weekend, so that'll be fun. Jumping over to Major League Baseball, Boston is still in first place, which pains me even greater to say as we get closer and closer to the All-Star break. Uh, Blue Jays are back a game and a half. Rays are back two games. Yankees are back two and a half games. And the Orioles are just not knowing what they're doing. They're out seven games. Over the NL East, the Mets continue to hold first place again, which is great to see. Um, Phillies are out a game. Braves are out three. Marlins are out three and a half. And Nationals are out four. Um, so if you're a Mets fan, you're doing okay. If you're a Yankee fan, it's not horrible. But Zach Steele's still laughing at us, and that's okay. <laughs> and we're going to end our segment with the Kentucky Derby and Preakness drama. So while the Kentucky Derby and Preakness are over, the drama still remains in the world of horse racing. The situation has been nothing short of a roller coaster. And this week it went from bad to worst for Bob Baffert. Medina Spirit raced in the Preakness after he was not there and he finished third in the race. Now it's being reported that Baffert will be temporarily uh, not allowed to stable any horses at Belmont Park or any racetrack in New York, which also does include the Saratoga race course. Yeah, it's not rumored. They actually yeah, did it. Yeah. And yeah. it's, that's not good. Well, okay. Yeah. Is anybody innocent until proven guilty anymore? Nope. I mean, so they have one test. It could have been right. the uh, ointment that they were using on him, yep. but, but okay. They're waiting for the results of a second test. Yep. Couldn't New York state wait also, or did they just have to jump right in there? I, I, from listening to some of the stuff they were talking about, cause they had a, they had a thing on one of their, one of the cycles the other day, but it's not so much as they're waiting. It's the fact is, is that there's now the question if allowing him to race is an unfair advantage to the horses that never had a problem. Yeah. But what if his horse really didn't have a problem? It was an accident. And, I how, mean, do, and how does it, and, and, and knowing the money that's in horse racing, it's yeah. called the sport of Kings for a reason, yeah. knowing the money that's there. I mean, the, the horses are treated better than you and I, in some degree. How do they how do they not have that the, the sample test that they pulled from the Kentucky Derby analyzed yet? We can get blood samples back faster than this. Where? 
Yeah, that's not, not, <laughs> no, right, not, not around I, here. Yeah, I thought you were talking COVID. Yeah. yeah, give us five, six days. Give us five, six days. We'll get back to you. But it, I, how they don't have all of the information out to have a firm report given and, and either guilty or innocent and move forward accordingly is beyond me. With all the money that's in that sport, all the private labs that they have. Yeah. I mean, some of the vets that are there are making 250 k That's nuts. They did put out a statement with the uh, New York Race Association president and CEO, Dave O'Rourke, said, Quote, in order to maintain a successful thoroughbred racing industry in New York, NYRA must protect the integrity of the sport for our fans, the betting public, and racing participants. The responsibility demands that action be taken today in the best interest of thoroughbred racing. Baffert attor Baffert's attorney, Craig Robertson, said in an email to the Associated Press that he is reviewing the decision and will discuss the situation and legal options with his client before their camp makes any formal statements. I'm just still trying to figure out what the hell I do if I had a winning ticket for the Kentucky Derby. And nobody's talked about that, have they? Nope. I think you just have to let it go no matter what they find, even if it came back positive. I mean, like you said last week, money's been spent, handed out, whatever. I mean, at this point, you're talking the Kentucky Derby payout, right or wrong, has been completed. Yep. The Preakness has been paid out, and we yep. know that one. And the Belmont will likely run before they have a final decision. Yeah. What? Nuts. Horse racing. <laughs> they And uh, just... And, and, and all I've got to say is that I'm no media expert of any kind. Baffert needs to stay off friggin' TV. He, yeah, but he hasn't been on he, in the last done, few days, right? No. Yeah. After the, after the Preakness, he had, he was on Fox business. He was on CNN. He was on sports center. And those three interviews combined are some, whoever his, his publicist need, or, or, or press people need to be fired. He should not be on TV because he, the Fox business one, he went off the rails. I didn't even see that. What did he do? He, 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 he blamed cancel culture for it. Um, and then he said at some point, and I don't know if it was more of a joke than anything, but it, the, the steps it got to, to finding out that the ointment was there right. was just more, it was like something SNL was writing. Oh, geez. Like and it, they, he was grasping at straws and then said, yes, it was probably the ointment. Yes, we use the ointment. And then they said that there was dermatitis on the horse. So they use this ointment once a day leading up. And I mean, I, I personally think it's stupid because we're talking a, a, such an infinitesimal amount of whatever. It's right. 21 picograms, whatever the hell yep. that means. But just tiny, tiny. <laughs> anyway, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have enough money to get a horse to, to race at all. So, But you have enough money to go to Saratoga. I do. And enjoy the day because it's to, awesome out there. I, I, I love going out there. Yeah. No, I love that place. The renovations that they've done, well well received, well done. When did they do those? Um, they started them like two years ago. Okay, I so I haven't seen those. The last time I, I was out there, I want to say it was probably five years ago. Yeah, it's definitely after that then. Yeah. And they they started them the year before, the summer before COVID, and then it was all finished up. They were going to do some stuff, I, but I'm, I'm pretty sure majority of everything that needed to be done is done. I'm sure now with the racing season coming up, it's, right. it's, it's, it's 100%. And I, I would think it has to be. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going back out there again. That was fun. Great place to be for the day. Great it's place hell, it's hell getting a press pass though. They're, really? actually, they're strict. Oh my God, they're strict. So I have a friend who had owned part of a horse out there. Yeah. So he got me on the back stretch. And so I had a pass and could go right. anywhere back up there. And I had just so much fun. Nice. Pictures are incredible. Nice. So some of my best shots I've ever got. Well, that's the only time I've ever shot horse racing. Right. But it's almost hard to get a bad shot. No, right. Because were they coming at you or going? They were, I had some of them, they were just coming right at me. Nice. And uh, one of them, uh, it was, uh, I don't know the turns out there. So I'd say it was first, second, third turn. Uh, they were coming. I was up in one of the, they have an elevated spot for a television camera. And I was up in that shooting down on the track. Oh, nice. And they were coming right at me. That's a good vantage it, point right there. Oh man, those shots are just freaking awesome. But why would it be so hard to get a press pass? I mean, if you're if you're like MySpace.com, but well, yeah, I mean, the insurance requirements and everything else like that. Really? So, I mean, I had press, I have press passes, but I mean, getting one specifically from them, they wanted the insurance waivers and all this other stuff. So, oh. interesting. Corporate, a lot, a lot of steps. Corporate world one hundred and one, I guess. Yeah. Well, that is it for us on here. Let me read my little ending here. And again, please, if you have, it makes it much easier when coaches and staff, when you send us your sports reporting to sportsbeat at mylittlefalls.com. Um, 
we do go hunting, but again, appreciate the few of you that are starting to send in and we'll uh, be pushing that with uh, fall sports coming up in normal schools. For updates, highlights throughout the week, find us on Facebook, if we're not in jail, at Sports Beat with Rob Drum. For all your local sports news and our podcast home, find us at mylittlefalls.com. For Rob Drum here with Dave Warner, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.